Good morning, God's people. I want to welcome you to uh, a meeting this morning and um, I will bless God's name for the opportunity that He has given to us to proclaim His word in this generation, to live out His word, and to um, teach and instruct people after the word. While I um, while we start this morning, I will create your indulgence to make it available in other parts also. Um, in other parts, you know, uh, so that other people can also get access to what we have, uh, I will be sharing. And I will just take, I know I'm still being viewed now, but uh, I have to do that in a jiffy. Um, So we have been talking about the issue of divine healing, which I titled bodily healing and the atonement. And um, this tries to place uh, our health in the scheme of our redemption within the back, backdrop of the redemption. This is its appropriate place, really. This is the place where our health should be necessarily placed. Um, that it is a part, a significant part of our redemption. It is a significant part of our redemption. That our redemption contains uh, our, our health and healing and um, all that pertains to life and godliness with us. And these things were not just dashed, you know, given by fiat, but that they were. Uh, there are things that, you know, Jesus Christ paid for. God ever hardly, hardly ever does anything by fiat and um, just by, you, there are principles behind everything that God does and um, there have to be foundations to it. God hardly ever does anything without that primary foundation through which he acts and that he uh, he performs his work in our lives. Praise the Lord. Um, okay, here we are. All right. So God hardly ever does his things without um, the foundation of uh, which draw, which actually goes very deep down to make sure that the authority of God is stamped on it and all that. So we'll be talking, yesterday I talked about the fact that um, you know, the redemption um, or our bodily healing is more of a matter of access um, and um, withdrawal of power to accomplish rather than whether God wants to do it or not, whether we have power or authority or not. And I'm going to be um, talking a little bit about that uh, area of power and authority again today. Um, so yesterday I was mentioning the fact that um, we would need um, to be able to access, con having continual access um, through exercise, through what I call engagement. I know people use engagement. Well, that's, um, that's a new verb that has come in, um, in the kingdom movement, in the sonship movement. In a branch of the sonship movement where engagement and engagement and engagement is emphasized but um, so um, but I'm talking I'm, well I'm using it in that same way uh, that we have to continually uh, have acts um, make withdrawals and then attempt to make withdrawals that this this helps us to be able to fulfill the words of Jesus which says this kind work not but by prayer and fasting. Now, it is not the prayer and fasting that was done then that the Lord Jesus Christ was talking about. I see that it's not at the point in which the person comes. Okay, let me go and now pray and fasting can come back tomorrow. But that it's a matter of the um, that which the power that we have made available before this time. That we have made certain power and um, you know dynamic dynamo you know Available. You know, there are two words relating to power and um, that are called power. They are exousia and um, dunamis. Exousia um, talks about um, 
authority. Authority that is the right to something. We have right to healing and health, and we have right to healing other people and being healthy ourselves. And um, we, we, you know, and the other word is uh, dunamis. You know, dunamis talks about raw power, the uh, ability to do uh, via raw power. You understand? We have the ability to do raw power. And we have Duna also, and we have Exusia, which is authority. Uh, we have the ability to do, and we have the authority to do, and to have, and to possess. You know, so these are the two that we have. They are, they are. We we exercise this authority in the name of Jesus. In the name does not mean that um, um, by just pronouncing the name, it means. Um, we stand in the name. We stand in representation of the name. We stand with the authority that the name has. Yes, of course, there's nothing bad relating to um, mentioning in the name of Jesus when we want to exercise healing and when we want to give healing, by, get healing by ourselves. But what matters most is whether you say in the name of Jesus or um, you stand. The, the, the most important thing is that you stand within the name. You stand conscious of the authority of that name and the power of that name. Now, the name of Jesus or the, uh, has both the authority and the duna and the and the and the and the raw power. You know, like I was talking about dunamis actually means raw power. You know, the authority to the ability to lift this phone is dunamis. That's it. You see, the ability to lift this phone that is dunamis. The authority that i give you to touch my phone at all to be able to lift the phone at all is exousia now the name of jesus and our operation in the kingdom and the fact that we are children of god gives us that the, the, um, uh, the both you know authority and power but you see we have to develop on the power side and that's um rather on the raw power side which i which is called dynamics this is the area where we have to um, do a lot of work to experience continual healing and to, to heal other people also. Now, why do I say that? Because, because um, if, we, you know, um, we, it, that, that's the area of engagement. You see, because um, there are so many things, there are, let me say, there are several things that the scripture gives to us as um, ways of generating divine raw power, dunamis. One of it is praying, praying in tongues, praying in understanding, fasting. And that was what the Lord Jesus Christ told them and said, this kind went not but by fasting and prayer. Why could we not do it? Why could we not get it done like we used to do it at former times? They've been used to doing it. If they were not used to doing it, you would not have, the man would not have brought his, his, his son to the disciples. The Bible says there was a woman um, who had an issue of blood for 12 years and he hearing about Jesus she hearing about Jesus Christ so she heard about the Lord and then she said okay I'll, if I may be able to touch the end of his garment so because people told her or maybe she reasoned that further you know and said wow if if I see this man you know the way the power is if I may just touch the end of his garment or maybe somebody had told her that if you can people get healed though, by his clothes they just wear his clothes and they get healed and all that why are they getting healed is it just because she had the authority it's not just because he has the authority, also because he has the power. You understand? Now, I am not. Um, there, okay. Um, the reason why we're saying all of this is not so that to make you feel um, unable to heal certain sicknesses or to be delivered by of yourself, uh, by yourself, um, by from certain sicknesses. It's, it's just because of the, the nature of how it is. You understand the way it is. That's the way it is. Jesus Christ looked at them. The one they you know, probably may have been handling before, was just going, as he said, be healed, you know, rise, and all of that, and it always went. But you see, Jesus had gone ahead of them in the exercise of this dynamis, or in the exercise of this exousia, which is authority to do. Okay, may I explain a little bit further? The policeman, that's a traditional explanation uh, in Christendom, you know, in the kingdom. The policeman standing on the road, and saying stop does not have the power it's not the incredible hawk it's not stone man it's not iron man so it doesn't have the raw energy to stop the vehicle 
but he has authority and he wears his uniform and he has his badge to show everybody that I am a part of the government agency that have been saddled with this kind of authority to stop vehicles or to allow them to go. So he wears that as a mark of his authority and he exercises his authority and says stop there. Now that is authority. Um, but the, the, the but it doesn't have that part. A vehicle, if a vehicle, if a vehicle seeks to, I mean wants to disobey, a driver wants to disobey, they can knock him out. Now, but you see, this is where Jesus is different. Now, he does not only have or where the Christian is different, where the Lord is different, and where we are supposed to be different, where we are different, is that we are we do not only have the authority to stop, we also have the raw power, like incredible hawk, stopping a vehicle with his own power. You understand the raw power, which is called dunamis, you know, that ability to in your muscles, big muscles, you know, big chest, and then it says, I want to stop there. Now that is ex, um, that is dunamis. Hallelujah. Now, but having the authority, the incredible power orc may not have the authority to go into the Nigerian road to stop vehicles and to, to, to point and says, You stop there. No, he doesn't have the authority, but he has the raw power. You get. For those who don't know the Incredible Hulk, it's, um, um, I believe everybody should know about the Incredible Hulk, you know, because it's about, it's, uh, it's the, what do you call it, these superheroes that our children watch everywhere, you know. And I think it's time for us to begin to have our own superheroes, you understand. And we will be sharing, after Divine Healing, we're going to go into all the subjects by the grace of God, and we're going to be sharing about some of these other things relating to how to uh, explore and exploit the designs of God in us to bless, I mean, to change, to overcome the, the trend in our generation. So that instead of talking about incredible work, we're talking about something. You understand? We have our incredible work. All of these that these guys have, we have ours in the kingdom, in the world. Now, so, so we have those two. We have the, and uh, now we have the raw, we have the raw power, and we have the authority. Now, but you see, the raw power, the authority is standard. You understand? But the raw power is never standard. It depends on the level of your engagement in God. You understand? The, uh, and sometimes God just does anything by, well, you know, God, God allows us, I mean, the kind of sicknesses, let me not say God allows, the kind of sicknesses, diseases, and infirmities that come in, uh, around us, because in the name of Jesus, you're healed and all of that. And um, they are healed. It can even be cancer. I'm telling you the truth. It can be cancer. It can be diabetes, it can be anything at all. Just in the name of Jesus Christ, you're healed. Or I command you healed. Now I pronounce your body healed. Now, now you're like I said before, it's you can say in the name of Jesus. If you don't understand the power and the authority behind the name, it may not be as effective. Or let me be positive. Let me say the more understanding of that name, of the authority of the name to heal the sick that you know, um, um, the more. Uh, successes you have in the area of healing and uh, of diseases and the more successes you have uh, in getting your own body healed so that's very important and how do we get that we go to the world we go to God's word to get that that's what, what that's what we do now so uh, like I've been talking about so, so so this other aspect which is the aspect of raw power dunamis it's also very very important this raw power um, part now that raw power is it, 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 we don't it's all about physical power with us we don't have to go to the gym and carry and carry weights and uh, do press ups and do all of that that is not the way our raw power comes the way our raw power comes is spiritual power spiritual power comes through fasting praying um of course the basic living the word is there now fasting and prayers and continual attempts to do the work of healing, to rust the work of healing upon God's people and upon our own bodies. In other words, the more you see a sick person and say, be healed, the more you see the lepros and you stretch forth your hand and say, be delivered, the more engagement, the more raw power you're getting, the more you feel um, the motions of weakness in your body and instead of rushing to raw running out to go get a drug to to heal um, to get you back to your healthy situation and condition 
You don't do that, and they say, in the name of Jesus, I heal. Um, and he said, took my family by stripes, I've been healed. Now, when you do that, you acquire more power. You understand? You acquire more dunamis. So that when you confront issues later, now, you are able to have success. You are not just working on the, on the authority to heal, which is the authority now given you to heal the sick. The unbeliever doesn't have that. Rather than doing that, Rather than depend, I mean, operating on that level alone, you also operate on the level. I mean, on that level, and your 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 dynamis is high. Your your dynamis high because you pray the Holy Ghost, you um, walk in the Word, you um, worship, you fast, you fast in order for healing to come upon someone's body. You look into the Scripture, you meditate on the Word of God, you know, and all that. Then you you know I'm I'm not saying it's not it's not possible for you to 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 happen and that's why I always actually want to be on that more on that side more you know than on the side of trying to urge us to increase our dynamics. But you see, these are the reality of things. Why is it that some people don't get healed? Why is it that uh, some things that it doesn't happen even when we pray, we shout? We... Jesus Christ said it's because you don't have faith. That faith. Is part of the dynamics, praise God, and it's also part of the authority, you know, given to us to heal the sick. Now, Jesus Christ says, because you don't have the faith, and then more so, this kind goeth not but by fasting and prayers. Fasting and prayers, or prayers and fasting, are the um, are ways through which and in which we get the necessary dynamics to be able to do the word, to be able to accomplish healing and health. Hallelujah. Um, it is very very important for us to know that now so 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 you 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 go to a, a pastor at the city and then you, you say oh about five thousand people were healed of course in the first place there are over a million people in that place so when you compare the scale he, he, you may have more success than him he maybe he has the grace to gather a million people and you have the grace to gather ten people and out of the ten people are with you two people are healed three people are healed now nobody shouts about that now, but out of his own one million five thousand people are healed. When you put that on the ratio, you may have more success than him because out of his own one million, for the three that were healed in your own little meeting of ten people, um, he has to have um, three hundred thousand people healed. Did you get that? He has to have three hundred thousand people healed. Out of ten that God gave you, you gave you have, you have three people healed. If Pastor Adeboye has one million. To have that number, if supposing all of them were sick, you know, he has to have 300,000 people healed. So, so that's on a scale anyway. But um, talking about the success in the area of healing and health and getting bodily healing and all that to yourself, he has a lot of success. Why? Because one of the things he does is that he fasts a lot, he prays a lot. Um, he fasts a lot, he prays a lot. So that, that, that is engagement. And what it does is that it increases your consciousness of the ability to, um, your superiority over sicknesses and diseases. You know, because when we, when, we, when we give ourselves to prayer, to fasting, to the word of God in these areas, one of the things that we see is that we have um, the, our conscious level our consciousness level, let me talk about that, let me say it that way. Our consciousness level, um, uh, our apprehension of the ability and the grace of God to heal, our understanding of that uh, and our apprehension of that understanding and the workings of God and through having seen demonstrations of God's power increases more. And then the more you fast and pray. I, I was told that sometimes Pastor E. Adibori can be on the chair and, and, be, and, be, and be praying. For 40 days, he remains in prayers. I don't mean that he doesn't go to the toilet and all that. No. But what I'm saying about that is that that kind of thing increases your uh, and, and gives you depths, you know, what I call depth of access. I call them rooms yesterday. Access places, access rooms, whereby, okay, let's say you come to the room number one in the spirit. You, know, you come to room number one in the spirit. And you are operating for that room number one of the consciousness of the ability of God for healing. And that's room number one. And then in the name of Jesus, you're healed. And cancers are healed. And, um, uh, and um, back pains are healed. And so many kinds of issues are healed. 
then you come to uh, 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 and then, but there's one headache that just refuses to go. It's not cancer. You understand what I'm saying? They're just headache. Because why I'm saying this, but I don't want you to think that some names of sicknesses are, are you need to do greater things. No. But I'm just talking about the fact of the, the terrain, the way the spiritual terrain of sicknesses and diseases is. There's a spiritual terrain of sickness and diseases. Uh, you know, so we need to familiarize ourselves with that. And now there is a terrain, there are terrains of the access into that divine power and authority. You know, there are terrains in there whereby uh, we can access the power of God. It is the same access, it is the same authority, and it is the same um, dynamis. I mean, rather, it is the same authority, but it's the dynamis increases in, um, in, in size, in width. It increases the more, the more we exercise ourselves in these things. Um, so, you, okay, so, so I, was, I was explaining this. So you get to a, you get to a situation where you seek you see um, a sick um, a sick person that has um, a headache, and the headache is just refusing to move. And um, so you are you are you are just coming to the, the first room, the first access point to heal. That is your consciousness. I'm talking about the fact that in your understanding, your consciousness. Like I can say in the name of Jesus, you heal. In your effort and all that. So, but when you discover that that thing is not going, are they going to remove into a greater access of consciousness deliberately? So. Mm. Even if you have not yet gotten into that kind of access place before in the spirit, what you see is that um, you, you, you make incursions into it. You want to fast, you want to pray, you want to do a lot of things. God, this should go also in the name of Jesus. I command you to go. You know, I know that you keep saying that. Uh, let me give you a case of um, um, John Lake, Reverend John Lake. Now, okay. Um, John, Reverend John Lee talked about a, a situation with a woman who was so sick, who was so was, she was bedridden, and she was so sick, she always cried out in agony, in strong agony. And then what happened? She, um, she was at the parsonage because the pastor wanted to be close to her to continually minister healing and health to her. So what happened? Um, after, uh, you know, every morning she would cry out in great agony. She would cry out in great agony. Oh, and then, then you know, pastor will pray and pray and pray. And all. Now there was this story that it went like this one day, uh, that um, Reverend uh, Reverend um, Gillick was shaving, and then that morning, and then he heard again the trolls and agony of this woman, and then she he went there, ran to her room where they were the place that in the pastor that's in the pastor's quarters. She ran, he ran there. Of course, she was so lightweight, she was all bones. He grabbed the woman in his arms and shouted and, you know, and shook her. Now, it's not about the exercise of shouting and shaking. You understand? It is the depth to which the spirit of John Lake was calling and said, No, in the name of Jesus. He said, That was the end of that sickness. Now, because in the, in the, in the attempt to receive healing for this woman, what John Lake found is simply was that he entered, he made an incursion into a deeper realm of the, of the access, of the authority and the power that we have been given to heal the sick. You understand? That power and authority is is beyond whatever you can imagine. Because do, let me tell you this, that power and authority is the one with which God is going to raise somebody who have been dead since the rebellion of Noah, on the times of Noah. Did you get that? People who have, who have died. You see, you are talking about somebody healing a dead man of 24 hours, someone who died for 24 hours ago. You know, God can heal, God can raise up people. But say it is with the same power. Eh? It is that same power that will raise the dead that is in us. So, you can imagine, so that power, that access, if a man wants to continue to journey into that access, you keep journeying and journeying and journeying and journeying and journeying. Journey. There's no depth to it. There, I mean, there's no end to it. It's in God. You understand? Because anything that is in God really has no end. You understand? You keep moving, you keep moving, you keep moving, you keep moving until you get to fullness. Even the fullness of Christ is still, a, 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 still has manifestations of, of, of strange rooms, of strange walks in Christ, in Jehovah. Hallelujah. You do get that. So, so 
so so we're not saying that oh that um, there are certain sickness that cannot be yeah jesus christ said but i'm not talking about strength i'm not talking about shouting and no but that you make incursions of course you can shout like jesus christ shouted like i pointed out yesterday like the lord jesus christ shouted with a loud noise did you see that you know i pointed out that yesterday but it's not physical shout it's not the shout of uh, desperation oh this should not happen no young man yeah you should not go no not that kind of shouting it's not the kind of shouting that is desperate that is expressing desperation it is the kind of shout in agony that is pushing with the travail of creation and the travail of the sons of God that are also waiting for the redemption of their body. That is the, that is the sound that was heard in the spirit. And when Reverend um, uh, Gili grabbed that woman, shouted, you know, Jesus Christ, the Bible said, he commanded the spirit and he, with a loud shout, that was what Jesus Christ did. <laughs> and then the guy, the spirit went. Um, and the sickness went also. The sickness went, the spirit, the spirit out, the storm the child went. So we should not be casual about healing. It's really when you lay hands on someone or when you are trusting God for healing for your body and then you see that something persists, we should enter, we should not keep addressing that thing from the same position. Did you get that? You know, you may be in room one, enter into room two, enter into room three, enter into room four, enter into room five, enter into room six, enter into room 100. Enter into room 1000. Enter into the, you understand what I'm saying? So, so that once you, you know, uh, and you know, once you enter into those rooms, eh, they are geographical places which, which, where your spirit can always dwell. You understand? And you meet another issue at another time, say, in the name of Jesus, you're healed or be healed. Maybe you're not even saying in the name of Jesus, but you're standing in the name and say, be healed. And the thing is not healed. Quickly, your spirit just enters. It doesn't need time it doesn't take time you, you know the change of the spirit the transport of your spirit just go ping, and then you enter into you know the bible said the heart of the man discerns both time and judgment you know you know where to access ping, and just get into room 100 yeah. say be healed and the guy comes up so it, 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 it's not that um so so the so the time when the situation comes you already have made incursions in the spirit and then having made those kinds of incursions to the spirit, you can command this, the, 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 uh, uh, um, for the thing to be rectified, for the thing to be renovated, for the thing to be rest restructured, you understand, um, by the authority of access which you have, uh, uh, which you have ability to, uh, to manifest and to enter into. Let's see Matthew chapter, oh. let's see Matthew chapter 9. And see something very, very germane here. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes and um, said within themselves, This man blasphemed. Some be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Okay, that was what the Lord said. He said it was blasphemy. And Jesus, knowing their thought, said, What wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the to the sick of the palsy, Arise. Take up thy bed and go on to thy house. Or go, yeah, go on to thy house. Now, what was Jesus doing here? Jesus was um, was seeking to demonstrate, not to demonstrate to, the, to them per se alone, but he was addressing a situation in the spirit. Um, tied to this man's sickness was the fact um, he wanted to use way because you when sicknesses come when diseases come like i talked about the intelligence of the spirit i'm not let forget about the word i say tied to this man's sickness no yeah, it's not really tied to the sickness like that but it was another way through which the lord jesus christ wanted to perform the healing the, what i which i call the intelligence of faith the prompting at that time you know that it should act in that way so he said your sins are forgiven you you know son you know be of good cheer your sins are forgiven you and from that place of forgiveness of sins, he was supposed to take his bed and walk. Now, and then the Jews began to say, who is this one 
This guy is a blasphemer. Who is this person that has the ability to forgive sins? Can I shock you? You know, certain things, uh, we have certain things for cheap and for keeps in our society, in Christendom today, in the kingdom of God today. And we don't know really. Um, we don't know that um, they were not popular back then. They were not established doctrines back then. They were not things that people could easily do back then. Do you understand? They were not things that people could easily um, um, exercise forgiveness of sins. So Jesus went there to the place where he knew they were going to, to the depths which they were not able to receive. And he told that man, he said, your sins are forgiven you. So when they began to complain, they began to murmur, they began to say within their heart, he said, why is it that you reason evil in your heart? Evil, of course, is that which is contrary to the principles and the, and the workings of God. And then why is it that you think evil in your heart? And then what did they say? I mean, what did he tell them for that? He said, it's easier actually to say, rise up and walk. This kind, of, it's easier for me to do that without getting any negative feedback. It's easier, but I wanted to know something, that I also have ability to forgive sins. So Jesus was tying the forgiveness of sins with healing. You understand? Not that, he's not tying it in such a way that if, you're, if what you did yesterday was not forgiven, you cannot be healed today. No, not in that sense. He was, talking, he was saying it in a redemptive way. Yeah, um, that, and you see that reflected in the teaching of the apostles who himself bore our sins on his own body on the tree. Do you see that? So, First Peter 2.24, who himself bore our own sins on his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, might live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we ye are healed, or by whose stripes we are healed. Praise God. So, he's saying that the most difficult part is taken care of, and so the easiest part is also taken care of you understand so the most difficult part is to see anybody that can forgive your sins see do you know what it means to forgive sins you know sometimes we hurt people sometimes we do wrong things i do wrong things and um i believe you also do wrong things sometimes things sometimes um but the implication of that wrong, the ripple effect, no man can calculate. Did you get that? Everything we do resounds in creation and in eternity. So, it is impossible for a man, you understand, to say, I for your sins are forgiven. You know, Jesus was not talking in respect to, okay, you offended me. That's why you can you stop it at your end. You stop the expansion, the gangrene at your end. Your, my, I, I forgive you. I forgive you. But he was talking about that to that man and saying, your sins, your complete entire sinfulness, your complete entire misdeeds are forgiven. The Jews will say, no, this is blasphemy. It's not possible. Let me tell you what one wrong does. God have mercy upon us. One wrong does, for example, it can affect the children, it can affect the future, it can affect the past, it can affect um, the present, it can affect people that even the wrong were done on negatively. For example, you see people who have been, for example, maybe they were young children, they were sexually molested by an uncle or by a father by their fathers maybe at the age of five six and all that and then they grew that way. maybe they were boys who were sexually molested and they were used as women now by the by the time they grow up they now have that weakness they feel that they are girls and all that and then do you know they also abuse other people you understand and those ones also abuse other people and then do you know also that there were things that um, they, they were meant to, to do, to, they were callings because he was, he was a guy, God made him a boy. So because of the abuse, you understand, because of that abuse, he couldn't rise up as a man. 
You couldn't have a family, which God had designed for you to have. You couldn't have um, a wife, um, which God had designed for him to have. He couldn't have all of the things which God had designed for him to have. So because he couldn't have all of the things that God had designed for him to have, what happens is that at the end of the day, you know, you can't, you can't get all of those things back. You can't get them back. You can't, you can't um, bring them from where they were. You cannot bring them back. You can't, somebody that has been affected maybe in another generation by that sin, you can't bring that back. It's God. So it's God that can say, I forgive. So this is what the, this is what the, um, uh, the Jews found blasphemous. Praise God. The Jews find it blasphemous to say you are, because you can't, do you know how far it can go? You understand? So it's only God that can pull the one in the future, pull the one that had happened uh, and in the past. He's the one that can pull the, the agony. You know, is the one that look at that homosexual case that I said, talked about. You know, the kind of life that that guy was supposed to live. You know, that he could not live because he was molested at, at a very young age by a, a, a brother, a sister, an uncle, and all of that. Everything falls back to that uncle. Did you get what I'm saying? So his own children, children that was, he was supposed to have, which he didn't have, the sin falls back to the uncle. Their wives and their people that they were supposed to have that they could not have, that one also falls back to the uncle. So who can forgive sins? It's a difficult prospect. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a difficult prospect to say, oh, I, I just forgive all your sins like that. So this is blasphemous. It's only God that has the power of eternity that can do this. So they were, this is blasphemous. Who is this man that is claiming to have power to forgive sins? Can you reason along? Did you, did you see, did you see the, the, the uh, eternal um, dimensions that the, the iniquity that was done was escalated to so it's only God. so jesus christ started from that place that i have the power to pull out all of those things i have the power and the grace to pull out all of those wrongs and and, and then forgive wow only god can do that so i won't say that he now says so that you will know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins you understand that he has power to forgive sins so that was why that was why uh, uh, he said, you want, I, want you, I want you to know. I want you to know that. That's why I said that. You know, so that you can think that this, you can know that this thing is more than you actually think about it. Dude. This is far more, you know, it's stronger than you have thought. You know, it's, 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 uh, uh, it's beyond your ability to conceptualize. It's beyond the, your ability to, um, uh, um, to think about. Grace, God's grace, is beyond your ability to comprehend. Uh, and he said, the Son of Man has that power. You know, when he calls the Son of Man, that's the title of the Lord Jesus Christ that he takes as the King of the Kingdom. You know, um, so I will, I will talk about that at a much um, uh, later time. And if you want to, you can get it in some of my teachings about when I talked about the Son of Man and all of that. So very, very, very important teaching. Now, so, so he said, which one is easier to say, you, know, you rise up and walk? That's easier. You know, because you are talking in the present, you want the man to act in the present and all of that. But so that you can know that the Son of Man also has ability, has authority, has the dynamics also to forgive sins. So what I want to achieve with this is for you to know that when, because God has authority in your life to forgive sins and you are being forgiven. That's the reason why you are living uh, as a believer. That's why you are content that you are a believer, you're a child of God because your sins are forgiven. Just imagine the ramifications, the eternal ramifications of our iniquities, of our sins, and of our trespasses. You understand? They are eternal in their ramifications. You can't count the debt. So if God can forgive us that, he's saying you know, that I can heal your sicknesses. What is sickness? That sickness is just on your body now. You understand? And even if it's from parent to parent to parent to parent to parent to parent to parent, I mean, it's becoming from that side, I have forgiven. And if I'm able to forgive, then I'm able to reach into the eternal past and stay in the eternal present and reach out even into the future to change everything to make sure that your body is healed, that you have bodily healing. Hallelujah. So, uh, that's very important. So, who himself took our infirmities and bore our diseases? By whose side we have been healed. Bible says God has seen it fit to put the iniquity of us all on Him. All our iniquities, all our diseases, they have been put on Him. 
And I tell you something, that the same way God can reach out into your future and forgive iniquities, or rather into your past, into your future and forgive your sins, God can reach out into any way he wants to reach out to you and heal your body. He can heal your body in the present. I want you to have that, um, um, that understanding that God, Jesus said this so that we can all have that understanding. That if he had power to heal sick, I mean rather to, to forgive sins, which is harder. It's actually harder. It's harder. It's more difficult. It's more difficult to forgive sins than to heal sicknesses and diseases. Praise God. I command in the name of Jesus Christ that healing comes upon your body in the name of Jesus. Whatever you need for your body, I command healing and health. I command life. I command life. I command life. The life of God. If you are a believer, you are hearing me. I make a passageway of the Spirit by the authority in Jesus' name. I make that passageway to bring forth it, uh, 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 life, Zoe, out of your spirit to flush every part of your body. Yes, the kidneys, the liver, uh, the sinews, um, every part of you. Somebody has a child that is tending towards homosexuality. I, 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 I command in the name of Jesus uh, that, that everything that is wrong with that child be healed right now in the name of Jesus. God has made a child, a, 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 a boy, uh, we decree in the name of Jesus, let there be um, the greater deposit of testosterone and all of that in the name of Jesus Christ. We command it to, to be so. Let there be repairs. Let there be renovations in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, people that have emotional sicknesses and the spirit of fear, I cast out the spirit of fear from off your life. Uh, you, have been, you have been moving by fear. You have been doing things by fear. You know, uh, you have been doing things by fear. You have been um, uh, uh, um, having your imaginations and thoughts, you know, uh, invaded by the spirit of fear. I remove the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast them out. I remove them from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I, I bring every part of your body, of your person alive. I command livingness. I command life. I command livingness. I command life in the name of Jesus Christ. I command life upon you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet in the name of Jesus. There's something that did not grow well in your body. It's something that did not grow well. Um, um, I'm thinking internally. I'm thinking internally. It didn't grow well. Uh, it grow well. You know, sometimes we can have some things that are not a limb or an arm can did not grow well. I. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes also it's in the internal part of the body. Something that did not grow well, that is fragile, that is not well um, done. You know, some people, you know, I have seen situations where some people, where they, when they were born, um, they pressed their, uh, it was said that they pressed their the side of their head and it, it, it would affect the, their visions, their ability to see well and all that. And I would bring a correction to everything that did not grow well, that is... Um, that is um, tied to birth that as, as, as that person was born whether it's in your family if you have anybody like that just believe God for it because I know we're very minimal online today just about two of us or three of us out there that are hearing me live now except maybe some other people are hearing and now click and now click it you understand to hear you can also hear in that way so I command let every sort of sicknesses and diseases go in Jesus and even to those who will watch this podcast years and years or even decades after i command healing to come upon your body in the name of jesus Christ. anything that didn't grow well that came with you and you you appear well everything looks well physically to you everything looks well everything looks sound everything looks very good but internally it is not well uh, and it's affecting a part of your life or the other i command let the growth supernatural growth attend to that place in the name of jesus christ i command limbs to grow Limbs that have not that are not properly grown. Uh, I believe they said this cause this can cause back pains. I command healing upon that place in the name of Jesus. Command health in Jesus' name. I decree so and we have it so. Anything that needs renovation, anything that needs restoration in your body is healed in Jesus' name. Now I want to make this announcement to you, and the announcement is that we're going to be starting healing rooms. I call them healing rooms whereby we speak continually concerning issues of sickness and diseases. I was starting, we said, we thought we'd be able to start this week. Uh, yes, it could start this week, we start advertising this week. Um, today is Thursday already, uh, but very, very um, sure we know that by 
um, next week, Monday, we shall begin to have the healing rooms in operation. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning, and God bless you. Uh, see you tomorrow, same time, 11 o'clock till 12. That's how we do the, uh, the, the teachings in the mornings, every day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day, um, uh, 11 to 12. God bless you. Thank you very much.